are still those picking up the embers of lost friends and broken souls in Watts. Detroit was ablaze. There were puddles and stains where Fred Hampton once was. Newark was nothing but smoke and shattered glass. Boys just back from Danang found themselves on their own streets. Nationally undergone by a nation that turns like so many with rusty, sharp gear. Bobby on the TV told the country King was dead. And the fires intensified. had been burning since 1640, to say the least. And as the bottles flew, as the flames smashed, And in the middle of the crowd, with these wars from east to west in the backdrop, a strong, beautiful white man came up to him and asked him, how you making out? Covered by the hands of children too hungry to go to their parents. Children pulling on her western clothes. She shook them off and said she was doing fine. They walked out of the market, past the shadows of the Aztec, past the shadows of the Inca, around the heads of the great Omer, who were probably her cousins. And this white man, in the middle of this firestorm of bombardments, riots, and terror, and brutal, brutal anvils of intellectual destruction that had been placed for so many centuries, Asked my mother where she was from. She said, Cambridge. And he said, Well, I'm a goddamn. I'm from Cambridge, too. The rest is unknown. The secret between those two that is lost in the din of everything that had culminated into 1968, that then poured and pushed itself through the walls and out into the world of 1969. And somewhere in that tumultuous volcano of a storm, somewhere in that massive eruption, there was a hotel room. Days passed behind 
four faded walls with chip paint and a well, well, well used mattress. And his helicopters were still landing in Da Nang. And his troops were still slipping across the border into Laos. And his filthy phone calls were being made all around the world and blood was dripping off of wires. My mother caught a plane from Mohawk. But she was already high in the clouds. Take a helicopter to the roof of the MetLife building. And when this strong black woman, born from a small town in North Carolina, who pushed through the dirt and hardship of a very segregated and racist Washington, D.C. through the 1930s and 40s, who somehow made it to the University of Rochester and met her PhD by the age of 26. Boyfriend. She had fallen in love with archaeology. 